Hello students, I'm Imkong Tun Lapungan from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today I'm going to speak on the module Importance of Mortality Studies from the paper Demographic Anthropology. Well, the learning objectives of the module are to understand the definition and meaning of mortality and different measures of mortality. Number two, to understand the importance of mortality as an indicator of health status of a population. Number three, to explore the use of mortality for planning and development. Well, mortality is considered to be an important index in population studies. Although the association between mortality and health may not be very explicit, yet decline in the mortality generally suggests an improvement in living standards and medical facilities. Structure of a population is mainly determined by four main components of population dynamics, namely birth mortality, immigration and immigration. Immigration and immigration depends on social, economic and environmental factors. They do not have direct relation with biological component of population like genetic factors, pathogenicity, physiological factors. But birth and death are directly affected by genetic, physiological, and physical factors prevailing in the population. Mortality has a great effect on the growth of population. Now, fertility or birth of a population normally adjusted according to the carrying capacity of the area. As the resources decrease, rate of growth of population decreases and the decreases in growth of population is instrumented by increase in mortality. Hence, it can be said that mortality maintains a steady state of population. This statement is further strengthened by the fact that sharp decline in mortality rates rather than any rise in fertility rate has been responsible for bringing rapid growth of the population. Therefore, mortality is an important factor in population studies, which must be dealt in detail to understand the demographic behavior of a population. What is mortality? Does mortality and morbidity mean the same? Well, mortality and morbidity are considered as indicators of health status of a population. Death is a unique, universal and final event. Therefore, mortality is clearly defined as state of being subjected to death. Age at death and cause or the reason provide an instant depiction of the health status. In high mortality settings, information on trends of death by causes substantiate the progress of health pro programs. But anthropologists and demographists give more importance to the rate of mortality or death rate and the reason of mortality which is of great concern for the anthropologist. Mortality rate is a measure of mortality in relation to time. It can be defined as the number of deaths in a population scaled to the size of the population per unit time. Mathematically, it is expressed as the number of deaths per thousand individual in a year. The mortality rate is equal to the number of deaths in a population in a year divided by the total population into 1000. However, Morbidity is a diseased state, disabled as per health due to any cause. It indicates the incidence of ill health in a population. Thus, mortality rate answers all questions related to mortality. Till now, we have discussed death rate in crude form, that is the number of deaths per year per thousand people. But this simple expression of death rate can be misleading sometimes if we consider it without taking age specific and other reasons of mortality in concern. A population with good health care facilities but with a large population with old age individual that is the case with developed countries. The crude mortality rate during a specific period may show higher value, whereas 
a young population with less healthcare facility as in case of developing countries may show low crude mortality rate in comparison to a mature population. Therefore, different types of mortality rate are used to understand mortality trend in a population. Now let us see the different measures of mortality. The different types of mortality are as follows. Crude death rate, age specific death rates, life table estimates we have life expectancy and survivorship by age. Cause specific death rate, special indicators such as infant and maternal mortality rates, prenatal mortality rate and child mortality rate. Let us discuss each of these in detail. First, we have the crude death rate. It is a very general indicator of the health status of a geographic area or population. It can be defined as the number of deaths per thousand estimated mid-year population. Now, CDR equals to total deaths during a year into 1,000, total mid-year population during that year. Age specific mortality rate. Total number of deaths per year per thousand people of a particular age is called age specific mortality rate. This expression of mortality rate is of great use for insurance companies. They use this expression to calculate premium of life insurance for an individual of a population. Life table. This records matters of life and death for a population. According to this, the organisms in a population will live, die, or reproduce at different stages of their lives. Life expectancy at birth. It is defined by the United Nations Human Development Report as the years a newborn infant would live if prevailing patterns of age-specific mortality rates at the time of birth were to stay the same throughout the child's life. A survivorship by age curve is defined by what fraction of a growing group or like of a starting group is still alive at each successive age. Now let us see cause specific mortality rate. The death rate due to the specific cause of death is taken as cause specific mortality rate. This expression is very useful to understand the trend of mortality due to an epidemic or a disease prevailing in a population. Next, we have special indicators. First indicator, infant mortality rate. It is defined as the number of deaths of children of less than one year, that is the infants in one year per thousand live births. Next indicator, maternal mortality. According to WHO, Maternal mortality is defined as the death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of the duration and site of the pregnancy from any cause related to or aggravated by the pregnancy or its management, but not from accidental or incidental causes. Maternal mortality ratio is the ratio of the number of maternal deaths per 100,000 live births. It is one of the indicator in assessing the quality of a healthcare system. First, aside from the WHO definition, other definitions exist and some include accidental and incidental causes. Incidental causes include that secondary to violence against women that may be related to the pregnancy and can be affected by the socio-economic and cultural environment. Maternal mortality numbers are unreported as the major causes of maternal death are bacterial infection, variants of the gestational hypertension including preeclampsia, obstetrical hemorrhage, ectopic pregnancy, amniotic fluid embolism, and complications of abortions. Indirect causes can be malaria, anemia, HIV AIDS and cardiovascular disease, complicated pregnancy among others. Now let us see prenatal mortality. 
The sum of neonatal deaths and fetal deaths per thousand births in a year is called prenatal mortality. It can be useful to understand condition of child and mother before and after birth of child like sufficient supplements and healthcare facilities, etc. Child mortality rate, the number of deaths of children less than 5 years per thousand live births in one year is called child mortality rate. There are two other types of mortality rate which are used in medical studies to assess the success or failure of a treatment procedure. The first, we have the early mortality rate. That rate in early stage of ongoing treatment. Number two, late mortality rate, death rate during later stage of ongoing treatment. Now let us discuss as how to get mortality data. One can get mortality data from various resources. First, we have National Vital Registration System, a major source in developed countries. Universal coverage of the population and its continuous operation, but its disadvantage is that it is late or never reported. Events are collected by a local registration office, usually a government agency. Individual citizens, local officials, physicians, hospital employees, etc. report the information to registration office. Next, we have sample registration system, for example, in China and India. Sample registration system. It began in 1964 to 1965. It does over 6,000 sampling units, that is about 100 lakh population. 12 registration system for birds and deaths is the task they perform and provide fertility and mortality estimates for every state and territory also. Cause of death based on lay reporting. Now next we have the household survey. It is used to estimate the infant and child mortality. It began during the early 1960s to measure the demographic impact of family planning programs. Systematic National Household Sample Surveys was designed in a manner to collect data on population and health. For health assessment of developing countries, family planning and population surveys are still the largest source of data. There are various major international household surveys, world fertility surveys, demographic and health surveys from 1985 to the present. Special longitudinal investigations, for example, maternal mortality studies. Specialized longitudinal studies takes into account selected events such as maternal mortality in Egypt, Nigeria, Philippines, Bangladesh, etc., and continuing longitudinal event registration in selected study populations such as in Madlabin, Bangladesh, Rakhine, Uganda. Now let us discuss the different types of mortality studies. The analysis of occupational cohort mortality studies has traditionally been plagued by the bias resulting from improper comparisons of working populations with the general population. For example, the age-specific mortality rate for arteriosclerotic cardiovascular disease in an unexposed working population is usually 60 to 90 percent of the rate in the general population. Thus, the general population cannot serve as an appropriate control group when interest is in detecting relative risk in the range 1.5 to 2. Since present-day exposures are in general lower than exposures experienced in the past and since most substances associated with the large increase in relative risk may have already been discovered, occupational epidemiology has become increasingly concerned with detecting the relative risk less than 2. 
recognizing that the general U.S. population is not an adequate control group, occupational epidemiologists have increasingly relied upon comparisons within a single cohort among workers who differ in levels of exposure. Unfortunately, if workers at increased risk terminate employment early, standard intra-cohort methods of analysis that estimate mortality as a function of cumulative exposure can underestimate the true effect of exposure on mortality, whether or not one adjusts for time of termination of employment. Thus, even in intra-cohort analysis, increases in the relative risk in the range 1s to 2 due to occupational exposures can be masked by the early termination of workers with poor prognosis, which we refer to as the healthy worker survivor effect. In this monograph, we present a set of statistical methods specifically designed to control bias due to the healthy worker survivor effect. Although Kilpert recognized that for chronic discipline illnesses such as the XSCVT bias due to the healthy worker survivor effect could not be controlled by standard methods, she conjectured that for diseases for which the interval between clinical manifestation and death is brief, such as lung cancer, any bias due to the healthy worker survivor effect that is, causal inference in mortality studies could be abolished by estimating the association of mortality with cumulative exposure lagged some 10 years. That is, for an individual at risk at age T, an exposure received after age T to 10 is ignored for the purpose of analysis. In cohort mortality studies, in which individuals are exposed to the agent under study for sustained periods of time, independent risk factors for deaths commonly determine later exposure history. For example, in occupational cohorts, we observe that unexposed individuals who terminate employment at any age, say 40, prior to age 65 have higher subsequent age-specific mortality rates than unexposed individuals who continue to work past that age, at least in part because of the healthy worker survivor effect. It follows that termination status is both a determinant of future exposure, since terminated individuals receive no more exposure and an independent risk factor for death. As pointed out by Kilpert and Rubins, if risk factors for death are determinants of subsequent exposure, the association of observed exposure history with mortality may fail to reflect a causal association. If, in addition, past exposure history is a determinant of subsequent risk factor status, the association of observed exposure history with mortality may be non-causal whether or not one edges for the risk factor. Now, let us discuss the use of mortality studies, general descriptive and demographic uses. Now, it is possible to study mortality from a number of angles for various biological, social, economic, and cultural factors which affect the health of an individual and consequently the mortality rate in the society. Focusing only on mortality never shows the exact picture. For better understanding, mortality has to be linked with its cause and other social, economical, and cultural factors. And this relation of mortality with set factors help us to use mortality in different fields. Now let us discuss about population forecasting. The study of mortality is useful to analyze contemporary demographic conditions as well as for determining the prediction of potential changes in mortality condition of the future. Short, medium, and long-term planning requires population forecasting, be it education sector, modern sector development, public health infrastructure development, etc. 
Now let us see the in areas of education sector. In education sector, it is of necessity to know the size distribution and structure of the school age population so that the planning to educate can be done in a planned manner. School age population will be determined by the future stream of birth attenuated by the child deaths. Without proper planning and estimation of future population, all planning and preparation can collapse. Now let us see the modern sector. Urbanization nowadays are demanding for modern lifestyle and better quality of life. Therefore, at the time of planning and development, the population prediction at that particular time in a particular area is of utmost essentiality to make it modernized. Public health infrastructure. Public health infrastructure are for communities, states, and the nation. It provides the capacity to those to prevent from disease uphold better health and prepare to respond to crisis, disastrous situation and to the health challenges in progress. A country with weak health infrastructure has high mortality rate, which has effect on the growth of the economy and other measures of development. Every country invests in public health infrastructure as per its GDP. A developed country has a large share of its GDP as healthcare expenditure, and this expenditure must be planned in a systematic manner. Mortality rate and its association with causes of mortality is very useful in determining which area must be focused on. An ill targeted investment can lead to loss of public exchequer. Hence, mortality studies are very useful in public health infrastructure. Now let us see the policy making. Information of mortality helps policy makers to plan, design and implement for the benefit of the population as it can assist the country's trajectory through epidemiological transitions. Let us discuss about social descriptions. On a shorter time scale, mortality statistics provide an important indicator of the health and well-being of a population. Mortality statistics are required to estimate the summary measures of population health among the subgroups in the population, for example, the life expectancy at birth and infant mortality are included to understand the quality of life. Yes, so let us discuss about epidemiological studies. Information on definite cause of death is also significant in various epidemiological studies. Epidemiology uses observed mortality differentials so as to suggest links between risk factors and disease. Mortality by occupation, place of residence, personal habit or diet, details disaggregation by cause is required. Now let us discuss the different uses for determining payment costs by life insurance company. The premium rate for a life insurance policy is determined by two underlying concepts that is mortality and interest. There is also a third variable that is the expense factor. This factor equals to the amount the company aids to the cost of the policy to cover operating cost of investing the premiums, selling insurance and paying claims. Life insurance is based on the sharing of the risk of death by a large group of people that is trend of mortality of that population and age specific mortality. To predict the cost to each member of the group, the amount at risk must be known. Estimation of cause of death claim is a question of great importance for the life insurance companies and mortality tables are used to give the company a basic of this estimate. By using a mortality table, a life insurer can determine the average life expectancy for each age group. 
now used in child health care. The relative ease of calculating the annual rate have resulted in the infant mortality rate being generally used for comparisons across regions, populations, and time periods. The comparison of infant mortality rates are often used in need assessments and to evaluate the impact of public health programs. The health and well-being of children and families across the globe are measured by infant mortality rate, widely used as a measure of population health and the quality of health care. Infant mortality is defined as the death of an infant before the age of one year. Infant mortality has a major concern with public health. The Federal Children's Bureau, established in 1912, focused on infant mortality as its first initiative officially recognizing its importance. The infant mortality rate also measures the risk of death to an infant, but it is used also broadly as a basic indicator of community health status, poverty and socioeconomic status in a community, availability and quality of health services and medical technology. Well, let's now discuss on the limitation of mortality data. With the improved survival of the population with modernization and population age, mortality measures lag in giving an adequate depiction. With the improved survival of the population with modernization and population aging, mortality measures lag in giving an adequate depiction of a population's health status. Therefore, indicators of morbidity, such as the prevalence of chronic disease and disabilities, become more important than this. Now, let us summarize this module. Mortality when viewed from the demographic point of view, it is studied to determine changes in the population size and structure. Study of mortality has major significance on public health administration. Such mortality studies are required to know the statistics on deaths in the population, growth classified by age, sex, and the reason for death, which are of much greater importance in formulation, functioning, and assessment of various public health programs. Statistics on death also form the basis of the policies of insurance companies. Most industrialized countries consider mortality data as the only medically relevant complete statistics for the explanation of health and disease in a population. Although mortality data reflect just the opposite of the state of health of a population, specific age and sex mortality rates are important indicators of the health status of a population and beyond that for the social system. For example, for the effectiveness of the subsystem of health services. Validation studies show that the diagnosis on death certificates are much more reliable than generally thought. Scientists must have access to information from the original death certificates because otherwise the increasingly desirable studies on the threat of environmental noxay to the population cannot be carried out. That's all for this module. Thank you so much for listening.